Christopher, what I want to talk to y'all about today is uh, something that's been bothering a lot of people around the world, and uh, the doctors finally put a term to it, but uh, if you ask me, that term really doesn't apply, doesn't even touch on what's really happening. So let me ask you something. Have you ever been held down in your sleep? Have you ever been held down in your sleep until the sun came up before you were able to move? Do you have darker visions and dreams of things while you're being held down? Have you tried everything you can to break the trance, the spell? Well, let me tell you something today. I've been dealing with this phenomenon for about, since I was about 13 years old. And let me start by saying, when I was about 8 years old, okay, I lived in uh, Sacramento, California, right outside of Sacramento, a place called Beale. And uh, my parents, when I was young, they used to always drive out to Lake Tahoe and Reno to go gamble on the weekends. So I remember one weekend, I believe it was the first time they ever left and I had to stay home without them. And I remember, uh, I remember they took off and went on their trip. And I cried and cried and didn't want them to go. And they left. And uh, I wound up sleeping in my parents' room that night. And uh, upon sleeping in my parents' room, uh, my mom had a whole bunch of little Virgin Mary statues and holy water and a cross with Jesus on it uh, because she was raised Catholic from the Philippines. Um, Now, when I was a kid, I always knew that God was real. I always knew that. And... uh, When they left, I remember that night I went to sleep in their room. And on my mom's shelf, she had all these uh, Catholic things on a shelf. And uh, I used to always be scared they would get in an accident or something, you know, and never, and not make it home to me. So I felt like the best way to protect them was uh, I would slip. cross uh, or a little Virgin Mary statue in their suitcase when they were leaving. And when they get there, they unpack it and they see the, the little whatever I put in their bag at that time. And they knew I put it there. But on this particular trip, um, I grabbed all the stuff off of my mom's shelf and I set it on her nightstand next to their bed. 
and I uh, laid there. I cried myself to sleep. I was probably about eight years old, maybe yeah, could have been seven, eight. But uh, in the middle of the night, I was awoken. I was awoken by the brightest, goldest light I have ever seen in life to this day. And I'm 37 now. Imagine, imagine taking a giant gold solid plate, a giant one that was smoothed and shined to the max. Okay. Then imagine the, one of the big old strong spotlights shining onto this gold plate. And then the reflection casting on you is how I could kind of describe it. When the light touched me, it went through my body. And I've never felt anything like this before, but this light totally passed through me. And I knew right then and there that God had touched me. And, uh... When I awoke, I was sitting, the light faded away, and then I realized I was sitting straight up in the bed, soaking wet, like I just jumped out of a pool. And uh, I'll never forget that. You know, I felt that God touched me, God told me He touched me. And uh, from that moment on, I. You know, now that I look back, I think God touched me for a reason. Because when I was 13 years old, I, uh, it was kind of wild. I was starting to sneak out at night and all that stuff, you know. But when I was 13, I came in, it was probably about 8 o'clock at night, and, uh, so it had to be around like 95 or 94, 93, something like that. But uh, I came in, came home, and I was super tired and stuff. My brother and his friends were sitting there getting ready to watch a blockbuster movie. But I was so tired, I had to go upstairs and go to sleep. Now, me and my brother shared a room at that time. We had twin beds in the room. And... He was into some other stuff, I should say, you know, uh, dealing with some friends that they were trying to cast spells and do voodoo magic and stuff. So my brother had this shelf in his room that had all these scrolls and uh all types of weird stuff, brass pots and candles carved into people and stuff. So, I never liked any of that stuff. But that night I went to bed and I looked at that shelf before I went to bed and I passed out. Only to be awoken by a really faint light blue light in the room. And uh, I remember I was paralyzed. I was stuck. I, I had a vision. I could see and I could look around the room, but I couldn't move or speak. Something was holding me down. And just as I realized I was being held down, something started to slam me up and down on my bed, maybe five or six times, the whole upper half of my body, bam, 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 and I remember like on like the fifth slam, I was like, I can't take it no more, and I jumped up out of the bed, and ran downstairs, and my brother and his friends were in the middle of this movie still, so I could tell I wasn't asleep that long. 
But I went downstairs and I started yelling at them. Who's slamming me up and down on my bed? They all looked at me crazy. I said, Chris, then nobody go upstairs slamming you up and down on your bed. You're tripping. I said, I ain't tripping. Some, well, y'all just messing with me. Someone went up there and slammed me up and down on my bed and then ran out of there. They said, Chris, we've been sitting here. It's the best part of the movie. Promise, we didn't, we didn't, we weren't messing with you. And right then and there, I blamed it on a ghost. I said a ghost messed with me and slammed me on my bed up and down. The next day, I woke up, continued as usual. Really didn't think about what had happened. But then it became a frequent thing. Every night when I go to sleep, something would hold me down. And upon holding me down, it would give me bad visions and images, even images of loved ones with a demonic look to them. You know, just real morbid, dark stuff that, you know, I don't want nothing to do with. But, uh, anyway, I was be held down until the sun came up. When the sun came up, they let me go. Now, I didn't get slammed anymore. It was just holding me down until the sun came up and they let me go. And every time I would go grab my dog and my cat, I had a Siamese cat and a pit bull, and I let them in my room and I'd go back to sleep. And for some reason, when the animals were in the room with me, they wouldn't bother me. But then there were times I'd come home blunted, uh, pass out in my bed, and forget to bring the animals in there. And this is what it's like, right when they hold you down and they catch you right on the verge of falling asleep. When you're just about to fall asleep, they're holding me down again. Can't move, can't see anything. In and out, little bad visions, bad visions, bad thoughts, darkness surrounded me. It enveloped me in a, in a way that I don't ever want to be there or feel that feeling ever again. But I've been held down and held down and probably when I was about 17, I mean, I used to, I used to leave home and run away not really run away but i would go spend a night at my friends houses for a week at a time and stuff just because i knew there was something at my mom's house that was bothering me and it seemed that whenever i'd go somewhere else it wouldn't bother me but it's one time i knew they were coming at night I started getting really bold with these spirits, things. And uh, one night I said, I know they're coming. I'm gonna act like I'm asleep just to see if I see them. So what I do, went to bed. I laid on my side that night and I squinted my eyes just like this acted like I was asleep. I promise you, not even one minute into acting like I was asleep, I felt the pressure. I felt the pressure on me. And they started to hold me down while I was wide awoke. They thought I was asleep. But I wasn't. 
I was sitting there squinting. Man, I tell you what happened. When they hold you down, you feel a trembling in your bones. You feel a chill, you feel a coolness pass before your face. Okay? When I was being when I was being held down this time, I said, I'm awoke and they think I'm asleep. I'm gonna stay like this and try to fight it out just to see, can I see them? So I laid there and then the, the shaking got really intense and I promise you, and I, I never lied to you on these videos about these. These are videos that God wants me to tell you and show you, okay? The upper half of my body lifted up off the bed. They picked, they picked me up, but my feet were still touching the bottom of the bed. Now keep in mind, I'm laying on my side. They lifted me up, and I said, oh, my Lord, they're lifting me up. I still couldn't see anything. I was floating. Then they started to walk me in a circle around my bed. Now, my feet are still touching the middle bottom part of the bed. I'm laying on my side. They lifted me up. They started walking me in a circle. I went over the side of my bed my head went right over the chair next to the side of my bed. I hovered right over my chair and I said, they are really carrying me. When I got toward the bottom of the bed, now I was frozen, so, you know, I couldn't move or break out of this or anything. But as I started going toward the bottom of the bed, Keep in mind, my feet were at the bottom of the bed already touching. So when I went in that complete circle, I was literally hanging completely off the bed with just my feet touching the edge. And I said, Jesus, don't let me fall. I wound right back up in the middle of my bed. They let me go. I jumped out of that bed so fast. Went and grabbed my dogs and my cat. Brought them in the room, I shook all the chills off. And I went back to bed. These things didn't scare me. I just didn't like that they were bothering me. So, that time right there, I knew it wasn't anything else wasn't sleep paralysis, it wasn't nothing like that. Something was holding me down, and it held me down, and it thought I was asleep. And I was wide awoke. Those of you out there, if you're having this problem, try it. Try to act like you're asleep one night, and tell me, do they get you? Do they hold you down? Let me tell you something. I still got held down after that, you know. I didn't know how to fight it. Paralyzed every night. When I was about 18, I uh, had my own little apartment. And I was with this crazy girl. And arguments had started coming on more frequently. We were arguing and it just put me in a negative place. Then one night, while I was laying in the bed with my girlfriend, now keep in mind this thing never happened with anybody, I, if anybody I was with, it wouldn't happen to me. But this time, they held me down, even with her in the bed, but the vision that they gave me these dark visions, they, they want you to think that you're having a nightmare. 
So they put that stuff in your head so that you pass it off as a nightmare, it's nothing else. These are demons, y'all. These are demons that are trying to take something from you. They're hating on you in some way. They're trying to rape your soul or something. I don't know what they're doing. But there's a term, uh, old folks, uh, especially down south, uh, southern folks, they call it demons riding you. And that's exactly what I thought, and that's exactly how I felt, and that's what it was. A demon was riding me. I don't know if it was one, if it was two, if it was a hundred, but it's been happening since I was 13 years old. When I was 18, living with the girl, it happened, and in this, when that happened and they held me down, the division they gave me was my same girlfriend, rolled over and looked at me like she knew I was stuck in this sleep and she had a demonic look on her face and she was messing with me I, when I broke up out of that one she was still asleep not even facing toward me in my dream she rolled over and was looking at me in this paralyzed state and stuff and I don't know if she was trying to say something to me but I wouldn't listen because she was demonic looking so it still went on and there was little spaces in between where nothing bothered me but they had never went away they've always been around they're still around to this day. Negativity attracts these things. That's what I noticed. <laughs> but check this out. Uh, when I had just turned 21 years old, I accumulated traffic tickets in Henderson, North Las Vegas, the city, and the county traffic warrants I wound up getting arrested and pulled over car impounded I went around the whole world first and then I wound up at North Las Vegas last while I was in North Las Vegas jail it's funny God is in the jails y'all let me tell you what happened while I was in this jail, when I first got there, I asked for a Bible, and they gave me the little New Testament and Psalms, and I kept it in my top pocket, and I read the heck out of it, y'all. I read it, and I started reading some things that, you know, I was reading Revelations, I was reading the Revelations, and I started to have dreams when I was in there. One dream I had was my best friend who was killed, showing me his house in heaven, big log cabin house with windows, nothing but windows all around it, and I don't know if it was marble or a gold floor on the inside, but no furniture. He lived on a great piece of land, like way out in the country or something. And he had a fence lining the edge of his perimeter. And he had his pit bulls running and playing in the grass. And I remember sitting there crying and looking at him. And he just kept telling me he's doing just fine. He's got this house that God gave him. He said, so at much at peace. I just felt so much peace in that dream. Then it blended into another dream. And I'm going to explain that dream in another video. Because that one gets very deep. It's about the Jezebel spirit. So God showed me these things. And that dream about Jezebel 
turned into something really prophetic that actually saved my life. If I didn't have that dream, I wouldn't have recognized it. Thank you, Jesus. So what happened? I woke up, went about my day in North Las Vegas jail. At our final break before bedtime, before lockdown, um, I was looking for someone to play cards with and I was trying to play this game Casino not too many people know about the game the card game Casino so it's kind of hard finding someone in there that knew how to play it too I think it's an old school Vegas game card game but I asked everybody in the jail, you know, play casino, you know, play casino, no, 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 the only, there was one guy that knew how to play, but he was in the middle of playing spades. I look across the barracks, because that's kind of like what it is, it's like a barracks with a bunch of bunk beds and stuff, and then one end has the tables and chairs for rec. I looked across, and I saw this brother in the corner playing cards by himself. So I walk over to him, and I'm like, what's up, brother? You know how to play casino? Yeah, I know how to play casino. He's like, cool, you wanna play? He's like, have a seat. So I pull up a seat, start playing the game with him. We went through one whole game where he was just, he skunked me. And uh, he looked up at me. He said, tell me something. Are you still being bothered in your sleep? Excuse me? Are you still having nightmares? Hold on. Now, I was just, just had a nightmare that night. The, last, the night before, I just had a nightmare, and I had a good dream. Like... He know about this. The brother said, I know a few things, but let me tell you something. And that's when I tuned in and listened. What's happening with you is demons are riding you. And they're holding you down. And they're trying to take something from you. And I was like, it's like, but there's only one thing that you can do to get them off of you. <laughs> oh, yeah? Tell me what it is, because these things have been holding me down since I was 13 years old. She said, listen to me. There's only one way to get them off of you. You have to say the name of Jesus off of your lips. I gotta say the name of Jesus. And I thought about it, I said it makes sense. Because when I was being held down and they lifted me up and were walking me in a circle and I thought I was gonna fall, I called and Jesus don't let me fall. Wound back up in the middle of my bed. So now I'm really listening to this brother. Like, you gotta say Jesus off the tip of your tongue. In the name of Jesus, the demons must flee. I said, wow, you were right about that. But let me tell you something, he said. They're not gonna make it easy. Never understood what he meant until I got out. Not gonna make it easy for you. After he told, after he said that, guards told everybody locked down, time to go to bed. I went back to my bed and read the Bible. And went to sleep. Oh yeah, I almost forgot. They called. I went back to my bed and read the Bible. 
and went to sleep. Oh yeah, I almost forgot. They called everybody for lockdown and we all went back to our beds and I read my Bible and went to sleep. Woke up 4.30 something in the morning, time for breakfast. The guy that I was playing cards with was nowhere out of everybody there. And I asked the guard, I said, guard, did you guys release anybody last night? No, we don't release anybody at night time. It's like, huh. And I started asking people, you see me playing cards with someone last night? Uh, no, no, no one paid attention to me and stuff. Uh, <laughs> he, old boy was gone. He was gone. And, uh, I asked everybody, and they said they don't start kicking people out until about between 7 and 9 o'clock or something like that starting. So, like, uh, yeah, it was wild. Uh, he wasn't there, so I believe he was an angel. Another thing he he told me, he said, "There's somebody that I want you to go see who specializes in uh, in these types of things. He's a pastor of a church, and it's off uh, the 40 block. Do you know where that's at?" And I was like, "Yeah, it's like a, a church on Comstock, an old church." And uh, he said some. Uh, he said a pastor's name, but I could, can't really remember what the pastor's name was that he had told me. But he told me to go look for this church and go talk to this pastor. And y'all, check this out. <laughs> uh, once he told me that, and I had got out. You know, the next the next morning he was gone and stuff, you know, he disappeared. I believe he was an angel, you know. For real, for real, I believe I met an angel who told me what I needed to do. And there's only one way to do it. You gotta say Jesus off the tip of your tongue, you know. Uh, and the demons will flee, and they will make it hard. But he uh, told me to go visit this pastor real fast. I went to down Comstock, like he said, on the 40 block, on the west side of town. And uh, there's only one church I saw, like right there. So I pulled up and there was someone outside doing maintenance or cleaning up or doing the landscaping or some uh, old brother. And I pulled up and I asked him uh, who the pastor was there. And at that time, he I believe he said that there was no pastor there right then. And then, and I, you know what? I think the angel guy said his name was something Simmons, Lewis Simmons or something Simmons. And it's kind of crazy because Simmons Street is right there now, I think. But I, that's just a, a thought. But, uh... He said, look for the Simmons pastor. And I asked the maintenance guy, I said, is there a Pastor Simmons here? And he said, mm, no, there used to be a Pastor Simmons here 20 years or 30 years ago or something, he said to me. But he, he long passed away. That he might have been the pastor in the church. I don't know, I'm sitting here thinking of it. But this is a real quick clip edit. I had to get this in here, so let me continue with my story. So, gotta say the name of Jesus. So now I'm thinking about this. The whole time I was in jail, I didn't get held down or anything. I've been gone for six months on that world tour 
When I got out, I went home, laid in my bed. They're holding me again. I tried to even think to try to say Jesus in my sleep, and it was hard. I couldn't think of it. It took practice. Every night, psh, 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 holding me down again, holding me down again. <sighs> you know, I couldn't get out of it, couldn't break the spell. It's a spell that they put you in. They put it, you in a trance. And then they give you those visions and make you think that you're dreaming and stuff. But it's a trance that they put on y'all. Now, I've tried and I tried to think of Jesus in my sleep when this was happening. Maybe six months, maybe a year later after that jail incident, I uh, was being held down one night and suddenly I became aware what was happening and the thought now keep in mind also all the nights before this I was trying to say Jesus in my sleep so I, before I went to bed I lay down and Jesus 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 Lord Jesus Jesus and I chanted myself to sleep saying Jesus but about six months to a year later, I was being held down. And six months to a year later, I was being held down. And I suddenly became aware that I was being held down and that I needed to say Jesus. So, here I go. I felt them shut my jaw. I felt them close my jaw. They didn't want me to say Jesus. They knew I was gonna say it. And they held my jaw shut. And I tried to break up out of it and they wouldn't let me say it. So the next night I tried again. I'm aware again. After about a one week of that, finally, Jesus, boom, everything gets off of me instantly. Jesus, boom, instantly gone. Now tell me there's no power in my Lord Jesus' name alone. Tell me, and I won't believe you. In my Lord's name, Jesus, alone, just in the name, it is so powerful that demons must flee. Sleep paralysis? No. One day, uh, not too long ago, maybe a few years ago, I was reading in Job. Reading the book of Job, and let me pull up Job real fast, and I'm going to go over this with you. Okay, if you have your Bible with you, I want you to go to Job chapter 4. Okay, if you have your Bible with you, I want you to go to... Job chapter 4. I'm going to go ahead and direct you into my Bible just in case you ain't got one so you can see it for yourself. So bear with me. Okay, this is Job chapter 4. Now, this is after Job had lost everything. This is after the devil 
robbed Job of everything. He was sitting in a pile of ashes. He was scraping his boils that he had from head to toe. And he had spoke. After Job opened his mouth, he cursed a day, and Job spoke and said, as Job was so frustrated that he cursed everything except for God. He even cursed the day that he was born, except for God. God loved Job, and Job loved God, as also we should. So as we go on, this is Job's friend, Eliphaz, the Terminite. After letting Job mourn and go through his go through his hour there, Eliphaz opened up his mouth. If we assay to commune with thee, wilt thou be grieved? But who can hold who, but who can withhold himself from speaking? He's saying, if I, if I try to have a word with you, Job, are you going to get upset? Or are you going to get gr grieved even more? But who can withhold himself from speaking, Job? Look what just happened. Behold, thou hast instructed many, and thou hast strengthened the weak hands. Thy words have upholden him that was falling, and thou hast strengthened the feeble knees. But now it is come upon you, and thou faintest. It toucheth thee, and thou art troubled. Is not this thy fear, thy confidence, thy hope, and the uprightness of thy ways? Remember, I pray thee, Whoever perished being innocent. Whoever perished being innocent. Eliphaz was sitting here trying to say, Job, you had to have sinned. You've had to have done something wrong to be tormented as you are being. Then he says in verse 7, Remember, I pray thee, whoever perished being innocent. Or where were the righteous cut off? Even as I have seen, they that plow iniquity and sow wickedness reap the same. Sorry folks, I keep getting interrupted here. Where were we? Verse 5. But now it come upon thee, and thou faintest. It touches thee, and thou art troubled. It is not this thy fear, thy confidence, thy hope, and the uprightness of thy ways? Remember, I pray thee, whoever perished being innocent, or where were the righteous cut off? Even as I have seen, they that plow iniquity and sow wickedness reap the same. By the blast of God they perish, and by the breath of his nostrils are they consumed. The roaring of the lion, and the voice of the fierce lion, and the teeth of the young lions are broken. The old lion perisheth for lack of prey, and the stout lion's whelps are scattered abroad. Now check this out. Now a thing was secretly brought to me. This is verse 12. Now a thing was secretly brought to me, and my ear received a little thereof. In thoughts from the visions of the night, when deep sleep falleth on men, fear came upon me, trembling, which made all my bones to shake. Then a spirit passed before my face. The hair of my flesh stood up. It stood still, but I could not discern the form thereof. 
An image was before in my eyes. There was silence, and I heard a voice saying, I, I believe this is the devil trying to tell Job, I mean, trying to tell Eliphaz. He said, Shall mortal man be more just than God? Shall a man be more pure than his maker? Behold, he put no trust in his servants, and his angels he charged with folly. How much less in them that dwell in houses of clay, whose foundation is in the dust, which are crushed before the moth. They are destroyed from morning to evening. They perish forever without any regarding it. Doth not their excellency which is in them go away? They die even without wisdom. Now you see that there folks? Starting on verse 12 I would say. 12. All the way down. That sounds like a, 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 the devil came to Eliphaz in his sleep and was asking Eliphaz, how can, how can Job be more pure than God? Shall a man be more pure than his makers, we said. Now this is a whisper in his ear, so what does that tell you? That tells you that the devil comes to people in their sleep and tries to you see how he's trying to steer Eliphaz into thinking that Job had sinned it had to be a sin for uh, all these things to happen to Job but you can just clearly see how the devil tried to use Eliphaz against Job interesting I tell you folks God is amazing and God is real now if I go a little bit back uh, to the beginning in chapter 1 of Job after it speaks of uh, how blessed Job was and his kids and how Job offered a sacrifice to the Lord for just in case any of his family sinned, God put up a sacrifice anyway, just in case. But if you go down in chapter 1 on verse 6, it says, Now there was a day when the sons of God came to present themselves before the Lord. And Satan came also among them. And the Lord said unto Satan, Whence comest thou? Then Satan answered the Lord and said, From going to and fro in the earth, and from walking up and down in it. And the Lord said unto Satan, Hast thou considered my servant Job? that there is none like him in earth, a perfect and upright man, one that feareth God and escheweth evil. Then Satan answered the Lord and said, Doth Job fear God for naught? Does Job fear God for nothing? Hast not thou made a hedge about him? and about his house, and about all that he hath on every side. The devil's in there saying, haven't you put a force field around Job so that he can't be hurt in any type of way? Thou hast blessed the works of his hands, and his substance is increased in the land. But put forth thine hand now, and touch all that he hath, and he will curse thee to thy face. That's what a Job is all about. It's a big test 
the devil wanted to take Job out, and the devil said, no, there's got to be a way that I could get Job to fall. If you take your force field from around him, Lord, uh, I bet you he curse your face. But the reason why I wanted to read that to you is because the devil didn't come by himself. He came with the sons of God, which are the Bene Ha Elohim, the fallen ones, the watchers. Watch Trey Smith if you haven't ever seen any of his videos, and he'll break it down for you. Trey Smith, T-R-E-Y Smith, the legend. He's awesome. Check him out. But anyway, you see how that works there? So tell me, is it sleep paralysis, sons of God and the devil, or sleep paralysis? Y'all's, it's up to it's up to you what you decide. But I'm gonna tell you right now, those demons are messing with you, and uh, they're trying to take you out. 